such potential, but then again all good things must come to an end. What's up my wizards, it's Dev from The Place with the Dex SVMTG and we've got a deck today that I've been wanting to revisit for a long time. This is Black White Warriors and we're doing it on a budget. Well, budget Black White Warriors is one of my favorite decks ever for sentimental reasons. This is one of the first decks back in favor Forge Standard that really put us on the map in a way, I mean if you want to use that term. This is, uh, the video got like 8,000 views back when we only got like 600 views on every video. So sentimentally I love Black White Warriors and I played it for like eight months, something like I've played for a really long time and I love the deck and I think right now before it rotates is a good time to come back to it and see what it's got going for it. So let's check it out. One thing to know before I go in on the creatures here is that um, the format lost Bioblight, it lost uh, Lightning Strike notably, and so these aggro decks are a little bit better in some ways, you know. We can crash through and sure Silk Wrap is a consideration and a couple of other removal spells. Ultimate Price is still played sometimes as a one of, but for the most part, aggro decks have it a lot easier than they did just a few months ago, and that helps out Warriors tremendously. It might be poised better now than it ever has been. 27 creatures in our Black White Warriors deck this time around, and we, we cover the curve very, very well, you know, from splots 1 all the way to 4. We have a lot of really good options, starting with 4 copies of Blood Soaked Champion. Don't have to talk too much about this. I think it's a no-brainer for the deck, you know. Recursion is great in aggro. We really need this. It's Warrior. Why wouldn't we play it? I mean, it's just, this is sort of a no-brainer inclusion, along with a couple of other cards, but we definitely, if, we, if we're playing 1-drops at all, we're playing Blood Soaked Champion. Let's do it. Still in the one drops. We're playing seven overall, so let's play three copies of Marty Woe Reaper, something that probably does need a little bit more explaining than Bloodsoak Champion did, at least. Um, the reason we're doing this is it's about as close as we get to Anafenza, you know? Um, this, really, that's a very relevant ability with things like Din Protector and Tassiger around. Sure, it doesn't really hurt like Jace or anything, but you can remove the Jace from their graveyard. That's not a bad thing at all. Um, so, you got that going for you. But, definitely with things like Tasker and Tin Protector running around, like, something like this really helps a lot of graveyard manipulation going on in the format. So, uh, something like Marty Woe Reaper's really, really good in some ways, so I'm, I'm totally down to play multiple copies of this. But before I move on, you could just play two copies of Marty Woe Reaper and maybe one copy of Herald of Dramoka, I think it is, the Vigilance thing. Um, this card, right here on the screen. Um, I just, I'm not really sure how much I like Vigilance in this format. I think I like um, Marty Woe Reaper's ability just a little bit better overall. You know, I ended up playing that, but if it's your taste to have, like, the option to do Vigilance, I wouldn't suggest, like, three or four copies of Herald, but one copy's fine. You know, it's a good option to have. Two of the most no-brainer cards for the entire deck at the same time here, I think. There's four copies of Chief of the Edge and four copies of Bloodshin Rager in the main deck here. Um, just both cards are probably the reason to play Warriors. Sure, Arsh and Foremost, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, but these two cards, I think, are the reasons to play Warriors. Obviously, the boost, the anthem effect, whatever you want to call it, from um, Chief of the Edge is just amazing. It's <laughs> just a two mana three two is always good. We know that this card goes in the deck as a four of. Um, same thing with Bloodshin Rager. I mean, everything about this guy is amazing, helping you get your dudes through. This ability still helps an awful lot against like certain decks that only have a few creatures on the board all at once, you know, which 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 is actually more decks than you might think. Something like Abzan doesn't have a bunch of creatures out at the same time. Something like Jeskai doesn't either. So, you know, the, this Blood Chin Rager can actually really have a great effect on the game. So, definitely want to play full plates of, play sets of both of these guys, all-stars. Two copies of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon Slayer right here. The guy's ridiculous. Um, yeah, Green White Mega Morph sort of made this guy a star. He quadrupled in price in a few months because that deck is awesome, and it is. Um, but, you know, in this deck, we also get the uh, benefit of him being a warrior. We get bonuses out of that. That's really cool. Lifelink is awesome on this guy, too, by the way. Good two drop, good three drop, too. And just love, love, love the guy. We can play removal, and we can play a warrior at the same time. Just yes to that. Four copies of Irish and Foremost. Hey, there she is. Um, yeah, the other reason to play Warriors, definitely. Um, some, you know, Warrior decks early in the format would play like two or three of Irish and Foremost, and then we realize like the card is just ridiculous. Irish and Foremost, even though we don't have a whole lot of creatures that have a whole lot of power, just even making one of our two power guys able to do four damage in combat is just, that's really, really good as a three drop that does something when she enters play and on subsequent turns. Just that's, everything about her is really, really good. So, Irish and Foremost, again, I don't have to talk too much about it. An established creature in this card in this um, deck and there's definitely reasons why double strike is insane you know and as a three drop that affects the board it's like a spell when it hits the board and then has crazy effect on the game as the game plays out just yes 
Two copies of Bloodshin Fanatic in, in my Black White Warriors deck. I don't see it in everybody's, and I can understand why. Some people like playing Strike Leader. I put that in the sideboard. Um, still a very important card against things like Languish, you know. But Bloodshin Fanatic is fine against Languish, too, a little bit later in the game, and you don't always have to play this as your three drop. There's ways to play it as your five or seven drop, even after you have, you know, later on into the game. You can sacrifice a couple of guys, you know. It's just, it does protect us in some ways against mass removal or spot removal. We can at least get some, hey, buddy, we can get some advantage out of it. The kitty distracted me so much, I had to cut. Uh, but also, the card provides a fair amount of reach for us. If we can just, you know, aggro decks have a problem sometimes against control and other mid-range decks, too. That, like, they'll get them down to, like, eight life and then just not be able to finish. Uh, Bloodshed Fanatic really helps us finish, you know, if we can just sacrifice those last few dudes, deal that last, like, six damage, and close the game out. And it happens a lot with Fanatic. One, just a silver bullet copy of Merciless Executioner here. Warrior creature type is awesome, and it protects us against creatures sort of like Ojutai and Sylvangar the Drifting Death, which will often be the only creatures they have out, you know, so that really is awesome <laughs> against those decks, and the fact that it gets warrior bonuses is good, and Bloodsoak Champion is a really good target if you don't want to let go of your Executioner, you know. Having a three power guy is really good with creatures like Arish and Foremost, you know, it's better than the, the average two power guy, so that's pretty awesome too. Just a lot of reasons I I think, to play at least the singleton copy in this format of Merciless Executioner. Three copies of Brutal Horde Chief, super, super important. This really benefits from the loss in the format of Lightning Strike and Bile Ply. Silkrap is still in, but it doesn't hit this, you know? I had a brain fart in one of the last videos, sorry about that. That makes it even better, you know? This card did get way, way better with the rotation, and just like Erish and Foremost is a three drop that does something when it hits the battlefield. This is a four drop that does something when it hits the battlefield. Very, very good for aggro decks to have, like, Creatures that are also sort of spells, you know, and both Arsh and Foremost and this will have effect later on into the game, really, really later on in the game. Um, both just really good, but Brutal Horde Chief especially is going to help you finish. Really, really good finisher, and if you can activate his ability, is especially awesome. We're playing ten other things, I guess spells, <laughs> you call them, in the deck, things that aren't creatures. Um, starting with some removal, one copy of Valorous Stance. Three copies of Silk Wrap and one copy of Murderous Cut. Silk Wrap, just one of the best removal pieces in the format available to anybody right now. Silk Wrap takes out a lot of important creatures. Um, the one copy of Valorous Stance, you know, you could take out the Merciless Executioner and the creatures and add a second Valorous Stance. I can totally see doing that. Valorous Stance is really good. Um, although it doesn't protect against Languish, something that we're really, really afraid of in this deck is Languish, if you haven't noticed from a couple of the things <laughs> that I've said. It um, doesn't protect against that, but it does protect against every other piece of removal in the format, so that's really important. Um, or it can kill things like Siege, Rhino, and bigger creatures, you know, a Jutai when it swings in. Just all kinds of big stuff. That's important for an aggro deck to, to have that option. So I'd see playing two copies of Valorous Stance. Um, and Murderous Cut, you know, we're going to be putting a lot of creatures in the graveyard. We've got 27 dudes in the deck, you know. Um, not to mention 10 spells are going to be dumping stuff in the graveyard too, you know. So we definitely should play at least the one Murderous Cut. And I thought about upping it to two, but I think one is comfortable. Three copies of Secure the Waste. I just said, you know, you have to play the card. I wouldn't go all out and play four, you know. We're playing a few things that are pretty high up on the curve. Brutal Horde Chief, a few three drops, and some more four drops as I go on down the spells here. So we don't really, I mean, Secure the Waste is a three or four drop most of the time, you know. Or it can go even bigger later on in the game. If we get later on in the game, this is really good, you know. Um, we've got a couple of things that will make this bigger, not to mention Chief of the Edge, which will make these things bigger. So Secure the Waste definitely goes in the deck, you know. It can act as removal, or it can be a really offensive piece too you know at the end of their turn you can just make like four or five guys that's awesome later on in the game so love everything about secure the ways but don't want to play a full place that i think three is pretty comfortable and finally, two copies of Raider's Spoils. Now, if this weren't a budget deck, I would just play two copies of Soren over this, I think. Of course, Raider's Spoils does have the option of being able to uh, draw you cards, which is something every aggro deck wants to do, but we don't necessarily have the ability to cover that life loss all the time, you know? I, especially when you're uh, racing against other aggro decks, like Target Aggro and things like that. That, that deck really, really races us well, is all I'm going to say. <laughs> Not a great matchup. That's why we got like, the Silk Wraps main deck and stuff, but... I digress. You know, we've got Scoured Barons, we've got um, Hidden Dragon Slayer, a couple of other things. Um, Marty War Reaper to help us out with our life total, you know. But for the most part, uh, drawing cards is great. But I'd just much rather play Soren. You know, the lifelink on that is amazing on his plus one. He still gives us the plus one, plus zero to all of our guys. That's pretty awesome. And his just other abilities are insane. You don't have that kind of versatility on Raider Spoils, but on Sar um, Soren, you can make other guys, or you can, if you can ultimate him, the game is just really rigged in your favor at that point. So I'd much rather play Soren, but we have budgetary concerns here. And Raider Spoils is still a fine card.
Here's the lands, 23 of them. Look at them, there they are. I guess you could play Shambling Vents, those are about five bucks a piece. If you added the Shambling Vents and Sorens, and I guess if you really didn't care about money, you could add Gideon, the deck could want that. But in any case, if you just added the Sorens and the Shambling Vents, you'd be looking at about, you know, right around $90, $100 on TCG Play or something like that. But as we've got it now, it's about 60 bucks to build the deck. But we can get along with this mana base just fine, you know. Again, it'd be cool to have Shambling Vents, but Caves of Coilos is a great card, and obviously um, the, the Scoured Barons is, really helps us out with our life total. Racing other aggro decks, that's cool too. Of course, you could play Blighted Finn and maybe even Blighted Step in the deck. I could see that, but in this particular deck, I want to have as much colored mana as possible. Here's our side border, at least a reasonable facsimile of one right here. This is the one I've been running for a while, at least. Marty Strike Leader, I put in my um, my sideboard here. Really good against things like Languish, you know, once we can, we can just dash this out. The dash is really, really good. And some people prefer Marty's Shadow Spear for the same reason, but not big on the card compared to the other one drops we're playing. But, again, digressing. There's a lot to say about Black White Warriors right now. Um, but, yeah, Marty Strike Leader in there against, again, um, Languish and other effects like that. Really, dash is great against that. Duress also in there against Control, um, Chief of the Scale, other aggro decks. I mean, everything is fairly self-explanatory here, I think, and the other end might almost make the main deck. Here are your power rankings. A final score right this second of 66 points. That's really not bad at all for a sort of, you know, a, admittedly B-tier aggro deck. You can definitely pull off wins. I've seen it in a couple of top eights of Invitationals. Not this particular one, but a build of it. You know, it's got a few spots for flexibility, and there are definitely a couple of different builds of the deck. Right now, I think this is what I would register if I was going to go, if I, if I was forced to play Warriors at a PTQ. I think I would register exactly this deck right here, except with the budget... With the um, non-budgetary upgrades, you know, the Sorens, maybe some copies of Gideon, and then the better land base, you know. And I can see even playing fetches in this land base. That would make some sense. All in all, I think without budget concerns, the deck could almost be like a 70. You know, the power score would go way up, the offense might even go way up, and definitely the versatility. So I could definitely see the deck flexing its way to like a 68 or 69, maybe even the 70, which is a really good score. But for the most part, right now, the deck is like $50, $60 on TCG Player. You know, some of these cards shot up in price, including Secure the Waste and Hidden Dragon Slayer. You know, they really got up there. But the deck is still fairly inexpensive, and a lot of these cards are from Cons Block. So you've had plenty of time to get them, and you might have them in a box somewhere. Who knows? I mean, the deck probably doesn't cost that much to build. You probably got it laying around. And right now, I think is the best time to play it. Oh, bless you, buddy! In the, in the deck's entire lifespan. Well, that's all I got for right now. What are we doing next time, as usual, you know? I think I want to build that Soul Tide deck. I've been toying around with it for like two or three days now. Definitely needs some work, but I want to build the Soul Tide deck. And I've got Red Green um, Eldrazi, the ramp deck, built as well. That deck is really awesome. It's super fun. The deck is really, really fun. And it's placing pretty well in certain, you know, tournaments. You see it in sort of the, the top eight, but the bottom of the top eight. So there is that. But the deck is still really, really fun. And... It's not done being built right now in this format. I think it's got a long way to go before we know exactly what that deck looks like. So let me know what you want to see next time and any other suggestions that you have. If you enjoyed the content, please do these things like <laughs> share, comment, subscribe to like. You just got to hit the thumbs up button. It's super easy and it like makes me smile. I love having a lot of likes. Who doesn't, you know? My name's Dev from SBMTG. This is Ziggy Stardust. We can call him a Johnny if you want to. He's a good buddy. Look how sweet and sleepy the baby is. What a good buddy. But um, in any case, thank you for watching, my wizards. Oh, his head's going over. His head's going to go over. Oh, there he goes. There he goes.